I want to talk specifically about Holtec International and its plans for southeastern New Mexico. Kind of just in a nutshell, what is their plan? Yeah. So this company, Holtec International, has got an application with the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, which regulates spent nuclear fuel, high level nuclear waste in the country. They have an application to create what's called a consolidated interim storage facility in the state of New Mexico and to be licensed to ship uh, basically the entire up to and beyond the entire nation's current supply of spent nuclear fuel. Um, and uh, it would be a 40 year license with an opportunity to extend for another 40 years. And it's, it's got a lot of terrifying um, facets to it, which I will certainly go into, but it's, it's very different from what we're used to in the state. And I think a lot of people confuse this with the WIP facility in Southeastern New Mexico. WIP is, is low level waste. It's basically defense facility waste, like gloves and, you know, clothing and things like that used in, you know, plutonium production and testing and, uh, but a lower level of radioactivity and, and kind of uh, danger, I guess, exposure to, to people. And it is a federal facility buried almost a mile underground in a salt cavern, basically. What this, is, what this proposal is, is a private company that wants to store this material in canisters, also licensed by the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, basically partially on the surface and partially buried. And the fact that it would be owned by a private company and not the federal government just carries lots of additional risks to the state. So I'll, I'll stop right there and go into more so detail. One of the things that I've been thinking about a lot lately is you mentioned this is waste that's coming from nuclear power plants. So there are nuclear power plants in different communities throughout the country where private companies have operated nuclear power facilities, selling electricity, fueling entire economies, and now there's this waste product and they want to send that to New Mexico. This seems like a, a this seems like a bad deal for us. Can yeah. you talk about the, the sort of privatization of this waste and, and what whole like where does whole tech fit into this? How do they get that waste and why do they send it here? Yeah, so whole tech is a company that really up till now has not been, they've been a supplier of the nuclear, of the nuclear power generation industry. And they've kind of recently got into the waste side of it and even bought a decommissioned power plant and, and now actually has title to some spent nuclear fuel, some canisters of spent fuel. So um, yeah, it's, it's, you know, private um, nuclear power companies, as you said, generate um, this, Nuclear waste is a byproduct of creating nuclear power. Basically, it's these rods that are used to generate um, generate energy and power and heat. And then they're put, once they lose enough to generate power, they're then put into these cooling ponds and then they're put into what these what's called dry cast storage. Yeah, and they are now full of this stuff. And the federal government has had a legal mandate since the 80s to find a permanent repository. And that's where Yucca Mountain came in. That was going to be the permanent repository. And under federal law, the federal government is responsible for uh, finding a permanent repository. Well, that did not work out because Yucca Mountain has been terminated as a project. At least it did under President Obama. Congress, there are some in Congress trying to restart that project. But uh, so meanwhile, these power companies, they're left holding this material. Granted, they generated, generated it and those communities did. And in all fairness, New Mexico uses a little bit of nuclear power, too, from the Palo Verde nuclear plant in Arizona. But, I mean, we're less than one half of one percent of the nation's population to keep things in perspective. And uh, and we are going to be weaning ourselves off nuclear power also, which is part of our utilities plan. So, yeah, they they want to get rid of this stuff. The communities that have this waste nearby want to get rid of it. And so this idea of a, since the permanent storage has not worked out, this idea of interim storage has kind of come up and it's a convenient solution for the industry to get rid of their waste so that they can produce more of it. And for the communities, frankly, they have this waste, they don't want it. And so it's a really, it creates very interesting dynamics of haves and have nots in the country. And this is where New Mexico is really embroiled in a national debate and this is a national policy issue. 
So you mentioned it's an interim storage facility and the NRC is working on a 40 year license. Yeah. What happens at the end of the 40 years? Where does it go when it's not an interim storage here? Yeah, well, that's the rub. And that's that's definitely one of the big problems is there is no permanent facility. And scientifically, everybody acknowledges that there needs to be a permanent repository that this stuff will be radioactive for a very long time needs to be put someplace safe for a very long time. And the federal government actually defines repository. Their legal responsibility means a deep geological repository. So that is the structural bar that the federal government has legally set up that we have to achieve as a country. The problem is they don't have one. And so so what everybody has, a lot of our congressional leaders, our governor has said is that we will become the permanent de facto site because there is no permanent facility. And uh, it's certainly not designed to be the forever site. I mean, it's an interim facility. It's obviously not a deep geological solution. And, uh, and beyond that, these dry casks are not, there's not a dry cask in existence. The, the technology hasn't even been around uh, longer than a couple decades. So, what, so the, the concern here, one of my many concerns is that we are technologically being asked to be a guinea pig for what happens when we start to get a few decades out and we have all these canisters sitting in the desert in southeastern New Mexico? What if they start to fail on a massive scale? But um, yeah, it's and then what happens if the country goes uh, if that company goes bankrupt? They're required to put up a bond with this, but who would then be required to take over this waste and where would it go? It could be an absolute disaster. So yeah, it's all of these are question marks without answers. They're not really question marks. They're questions without answers because there's no permanent solution. So New Mexico, this is basically a private sector solution being hoisted upon New Mexico right now in lieu of a real federal solution, which is what's needed. So you and Representative Matthew McQueen introduced House Bill 137, which right. did not pass this session. Can you tell me a little bit about what that bill would have done and, and what happened with it? Yeah, it's uh, what the bill would have done is it would have barred New Mexico, barred companies from storing high level nuclear waste in the state of New Mexico until a federal permanent repository was in operation. And initially the bill started off as just a complete ban on, on storing the materials here. And then we, we uh, amended it to say that it couldn't happen until there was a federal repository. And so, but the bill also did some other things as well. It, it strengthened the state's um, radioactive consultation task force, which is something we created in law around the time when WIP came into existence. We created it for the state government to have kind of a, executive branch, interagency level working group to look at radioactive waste, or no, sorry, uh, yeah, radioactive issues, and, um, and then, you know, specifically be the interface with the federal facility. So this bill would have also strengthened that to include private facilities and add more members to it. So it's one of my obviously big disappointments that we did not um, get this done this last session. So, and I think I read that Texas passed a similar bill and I know other states, you know, you mentioned Yucca Mountain, Nevada successfully pushed back against um, the permanent repository. I've seen other states. Why is it that New Mexico seems to keep having this issue and who in the state is, is like for it? It seems like so many people are against it. Who is a fo who's for it here? Well, there are some political leaders in southeastern New Mexico. New Mexico is a little unique because we do have the country's only national low-level nuclear waste storage facility, WIP. Um, there are a lot of concerns when that facility came into being. Now they have a uranium enrichment facility there called Uranco. Um, and so they've developed a comfort level. Um, some political leaders in southeastern New Mexico with kind of this economic sector. And so they saw an opportunity, actually, and they're the ones who put this in motion, some of the political leadership in southeastern New Mexico. They recruited Holtec into submitting a, this proposal to the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. So there's some of the big leaders for it. Um, ironically, right across the border um, in Texas, the oil industry is super against it because obviously we see the economics of oil and gas and how hot the Permian Basin is, and they recognize the risk of having an accident in the middle of that 
of that um, economic activity. So our dynamics are a little different here. Um, and so unfortunately it's, we, I see the support kind of fissure along partisan lines, which is unfortunate. Um, but, you know, having said that, it's not, we, we have bipartisan, we have unique support across industries that don't typically work together that are opposed to that in New Mexico. But yeah, I think the other problem we have here is we have a much shorter session. And, you know, with a 30 day session, Texas has a 144 day session. They, you know, and they had a very powerful economic industry pushing for it. Whereas in our, our state, you know, we had the environmental community, which, uh, you know, the economic industry sometimes has more political muscle, but, uh, you know, the bill's gotten pretty far both times. It just, it just didn't get pulled up for a final vote. And I, uh, I'm disappointed and I'm not going to make excuses for anybody, um, and why they didn't bring it up for a vote, but, uh, you know, this bill, a different variation of this bill passed the Senate last year. This time it would have absolutely passed the House if it had been brought up for a vote and I believe would have passed the Senate. So I think we're right there in New Mexico, um, but it is a missed opportunity that we didn't pass the bill, that's for sure. So in thinking about the support for for Holtec, for this industry in that part of the state. Are we talking about like entire communities and thousands of people? Or are we talking about, you know, a few people? It's a really good question. There's not unanimous support by any means in that part of the state um, for this, but people all over the state are absolutely opposed to it. Um, the proposal is to bring in this waste, these casts through rail, and it would come in through all parts of New Mexico via armed guard and um, different communities around the state from Las Cruces that I represent to Albuquerque and the all Indian Pueblo Council of Governors have passed resolutions saying they don't want this waste coming through their community. Um, resolutions representing about 40% of the state's population. So a great number of people in the state absolutely do not want us to be the storage ground for this material. I know these things take time. There's a process. Where in the process are we is there still time for people to be involved? Kind of what's happening? We don't know when they're targeted to receive an, uh, a possible permit now because or license because they're not they haven't provided the Nuclear Regulatory Commission what they've been asked for, and you know that's where we're at. There, there's movement in Congress to certainly try to fight it. As you said, Texas passed a law um, banning it there in the state of Texas. Our attorney general in the state of Texas has filed suit against the federal government saying it's illegal to do consolidated interim storage because it violates states' rights, because states really have very narrow avenues to even have a voice in this process, which is outrageous. With un unlike a federal facility, which we have statutory veto power over, unless Congress overrides us, not so with a private facility. So it's really a weakness in federal law. And then finally, several days ago, Senator Heinrich introduced a bill with Senator Cruz. How's that for bipartisanship on spent nuclear fuel, um, basically prohibiting the use of, of a fund that utilities have been setting aside, uh, paying into, to ultimately ship this waste to a permanent repository. I think one of Holtec's business plans is to tap into that fund for this interim storage. And uh, so they introduced a bill, Senator Heinrich and Cruz, to prohibit the use of that money for which, so that'll be a good door to close if we can. So, so there you go. It's this thing's being fought on multiple levels, and we're certainly, you know, the governor is steadfast against this. And um, I certainly intend to introduce this bill again, even if they were to get a permit between now and next year. The facility will not be built by then, and um, or, or even started um, because there's a lot of rail issues that have to be worked out. So I'm going to keep fighting, and the citizens of New Mexico. What they can do is they can educate each other. They can thank you for reporting on this. That's so important so people can learn about the project. And, and there's groups around the state that are certainly, um, and I apologize, I don't have a website handy. I probably should have, but there's advocacy groups that are fighting this. People can get involved. They can speak up. They can let their legislators know, hey, next time you have an opportunity to vote on this, get this bill passed. Take the bullseye off New Mexico.